one of those few instances when you hear a new musician and your heart jumps with joy and you get the feeling that this is someone who's descended straight from up and he's got his art form straight from above because some musicians they don't need 1000 notes to communicate they just need to play two three notes and they touch your heart i'm going to be talking about a very young kid whom i discovered uh, on the youtube i don't know him i just spoke to him once after finding out his number after a, after great difficulty and congratulated him but i have not even met him in person and he doesn't even know that i'm putting this video out but i think as musicians when we hear somebody outstanding and supremely talented it's our duty to let the world know because my heart is jumping with joy when i heard a carnatic musician of this caliber after a long time i'm talking about this boy his name is ramana balachandran and he is a carnatic veena player and he's just all of 18 years old ladies and gentlemen i don't need to say much please all you carnatic music lovers go on youtube go on whatever platform just hear this kid out I really want him to get a lot of success, lot of fame because trust me, you know, the same feeling I used to get when I used to hear mandolin Yu Srinivas after a long time I've heard a musician of this caliber. So please go check him out and uh, I'm sure that you're going to enjoy this. Hey, there is the man. Hi, I'm Adam. Hey. Wow. Oh, man, what can I do? <laughs> what can I say now? Don't make it embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You know like this this 2 minute video has just smashed every question that I was going to ask you about and then oh, it's all on. gone now. <laughs> now I don't know what to do. <laughs> no, I don't want to just uh, embarrass you with uh, this kind of uh, phrases i know that you do i know you personally a little bit maybe yeah. a lot uh, i don't know what's the how uh, what's the def uh, little is too much too much is little uh, like that so hey ramana where are you now i'm in uh, tirunamalai and uh, in oh. my studio so oh man super so you're like in bliss constant I guess so. <laughs> But I get I I have the opportunity to access it. So I don't know whether I'm using the opportunity well. <laughs> well, you don't have to know it. Others would know it. So please, you don't have to know anything. You just do what you're doing. Okay? <laughs> so, how is the weather like today there? Is it still It's raining? It's quite there? rainy. It's been very rainy since um a uh, a week. So, um, it's very pleasant. Quite cold actually in the nights. Mm-hmm. Um, and the hill looks beautiful uh, in this weather so when doesn't it look beautiful actually no, that's true yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's another uh, magic Absolutely. of that place so does it really like uh, is it does it really get really hot in summer over there oh, or it, 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 it's basically a um, um, a furnace uh, it just roasts you and uh, but fortunately we've been having quite uh mild summer since 3 years and mm. uh, it used to go uh, up to about 43 um, oh my god oh years back but the last 3 years been quite kind to us so so is it because of the reflection of the of the the hill probably i i guess i guess there is some radiation that happens from the hill as well but um i'm not really sure um in fact i uh, i've heard that i mean i've not delved um uh, Uh, deeper into why this happens but i've heard that the presence of the hill actually cools down the place uh, mm. a lot so because when it comes to mysore no it's totally opposite because mysore really uh, gets heated up because of the reflection of 
the sun from the rocks, right? Uh, so uh, the, right, the right. Chamundi Hill. Uh, so normally, if if Bangalore is thirty, Mysore would certainly be thirty-three or something mm, like that. You know, mm, it's mm. Uh, also like Bangalore is is two thousand feet uh, up mm. sea level. So yeah. So you were living in Bangalore, huh? So I, uh, yes. You were born in Bangalore. You were living I, in Bangalore. I was practically born and brought up in Bangalore. Um, until recently in 2019 when uh, we sh- shifted completely to tirunelveli of course out of interest in uh, shri ramana maharshi so um, uh, yeah a lot of fond memories uh, from bangalore that's where i also started to perform and uh, that's right that's where we've played a lot as well <laughs> well, <laughs> one my, well one of my first concerts was with you as well so uh, this was a uh, this was long oh. back 2013 So, oh my god almost 10 years now yeah yeah so oh, this wow. was i think in bellandur uh, that was my bellandur. first interview yeah <laughs> it was such a <laughs> such a funny funny instance because uh, of course i was told that oh you have to play with this with this little boy you know it's like okay little boy and then uh, the, i had i went i came there and then i think first person i met over there was your father uh, and then i asked him where is ramana is like yeah. no he's he's going to do his uh, daily evening ritual you know like sandhya and i was like oh this guy is too serious you know i i can't be like uh, uh you know like oh, oh it is not going to get any easy for me from now on, you know but uh, uh it's not about any competition or anything but uh, probably one of the concerts that i would remember for a long time because yeah, likewise uh, yeah i mean the, uh, yeah yeah because uh uh you know when when there is a lot of uh when there is no expectations mm. from a concert and then you go there and then it turns out to be one of the best concerts that you have played uh because normally you know when when you're playing a really good concert you have a lot of expectations yeah and it was the first time i heard heard your name or anything and then i was like okay as a uh, Shankar ji said you know uh, it was one of the the best best things that happened to me uh, to play with you and stuff like that i don't want to keep on praising you or anything like that but uh, i'll come back to your uh... <laughs> oh i still remember what um, uh, the funny things that i had to do on stage and embarrass me myself you <laughs> what was it come on tell me tell me tell me i forgot oh, i i i remember doing the that was i think the second or third time that i ever played an rtp on stage and ah. i was uh, i mean i used to i used to be um, uh, quite nervous about you know the trikalam and getting those things right getting the swarams right and uh, everything bef- before getting on stage but when i went on stage i it was it always felt like home but <laughs> uh, oh i messed up uh, like like a crazy bunch that <laughs> Really? I remember your messing up also sounded good to me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it was uh, it was uh, very very gracious and kind of you to you know put up with me that day. <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. Uh, yeah. Nothing like that. But uh, just coming back to Bangalore, uh, you lived in Chamrajpet, right? So we lived in multiple places. We lived in Banargata. Cham- Finally, I mean, at the end uh, of our uh, stay, we lived in Chamrajpet. very uh, close to shankar mat very close to shankar mat yes yeah how did you like the brahmin's coffee bar idli and oh i used to frequent it vada i don't know every week or <laughs> i mean man i'm so is... jealous of people who live close to that place yeah i mean like that's one of the best best idli or chutney yeah. or vada and even yeah vada coffee man yeah. coffee oh oh dear oh dear I... <laughs> How could you leave that place and go somewhere else? <laughs> oh, that, that was like a that was like a, 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 a what do you say a glutton's heaven. So you know this side you have Vidyarthi Bhavan, uh, you have Brahmin's Cafe here, you have SLV, and yeah, I miss Bangalore food sometimes. You know the uh, the, the the masala dosas with the kemp chutney and <laughs> oh, oh, I mean like uh, uh, of course uh, Tiruvannamalai. is a place where also there are a lot of tourists right so yeah, a lot of have, westerners you might you might have some, There's some good, good bunch of here. yeah yeah uh, but uh, i'm kind of very very used to the karnataka take on sambar and uh, those that means there. you like the sweety side of it yes yes <laughs> because <Even? laughs> 
<laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of musicians who who frequent Bangalore, uh. Uh, starting with uh, my guru, Dr. T K Murthy sir. Uh. Uh, the first thing that he likes uh, is Bisi Bele Bath. Oh, of course. Right, <laughs> and then he would say. Uh, I will say it in Tamil, okay? Uh. Uh, so that is the first thing that he likes. And then he would say, Bisi Bele uh yeah. i would always uh, pester amma to make you know this um sambar with this bedige chilli which you get ah, only in bedige yeah yeah, uh, yeah 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 you know you oh, get is it? deep ha huh? you don't get it here uh yeah. anywhere in tamil nadu and this you know br- uh, deep red color that comes along with it <laughs> and uh, oh yeah so even the rasam and sambar i somehow prefer the the in fact the udupi version is uh, super yeah. So so where were you born Ramana which uh, which area? I was actually born in Sri Rangam Anna. so Ah Sri Rangam okay Sri Rangam. okay yeah. and then we um within 3 months of my birth we went to the US for one and a half years uh ah. where appa had um uh, had work so and then he, since he, I was then, he used to be a scientist right he was a software engineer for almost software 25 engineer. years okay. yeah okay yeah. okay yeah. okay oh perfect and then um when did the uh, the actual formal music happened to you i'm i'm sure uh, casually music was happening to you all the time but yeah. formally uh, because uh, i know that your your father yeah. is your guru right yeah. so uh, like was there a moment when when he and uh, your mom they thought okay this okay all fun and then casualness is finished so now is the time that ramana should get on, get on to the serious side of it yeah so it's um <laughs> so my entry into music was um, as you know murdangam so uh, that that happened when i was 4 uh, so amma had uh, took me to satyakumar sir and um, so in inr college of music that's where i learned for i think 2 3 years mm-hmm. and uh, i had a, a break i couldn't uh, pursue murdangam then i learned from this person called nagendra sir and mm-hmm. uh, and then finally learned from uh, rangana chakravarti sir okay uh, so mrudanga was my entry into music of course amma used to teach me basic lessons um, vocal lessons so um, since the age of 5 or 6 so and then okay. veena was an accident amma was playing oh, really? and uh, she was What a beautiful a accident <laughs> i wish the same accident happens to every every possible musician or human being you know <laughs> man this kind of accidents should happen <laughs> uh, so so i'm always playing sad in chennai and uh, i didn't keep my mouth shut and i said you're playing this wrong and uh, she was immediately ah how do you, how can you say that can you play can you then play it and show me and i uh, somehow just could relate to the instrument very quickly so she thought oh maybe this guy has some flair for the instrument so that's when she took me to her guru nagalakshmi ma'am ah. uh, under whom um, uh, i learned for 3 years and mm. uh, uh, since i mean this then it's been a lot of sitting at home and discovering our own techniques and sitting with so appa appa is also veena player right appa is a singer so ah. i after the point you start to translate music into your instrument ilyana okay so um, um appa is uh, so appa has been the music guru for me and mm. uh, uh, with respect to the veena techniques it's been mostly you know uh, involving me sitting at home and playing and discovering my own techniques uh, mm-hmm. yeah so did is there some some particular uh, uh, style that you're attracted to more or uh, i uh, mean like this is a, i mean like this is a, this might be a Uh, a very vague or a, a, a broad uh, question mm, that mm. might have a lot of answers but uh, i'm sure there is something that you are attracted to so uh, at different points of times i was attracted to uh, styles one style that really um, i wouldn't say the the style on the whole um, moved me but there were aspects of different styles that really touched me for instance one thing that really stuck to me was uh, you know balachandar sir's um you know 
uh, the the vertical pulling technique, which is insane, and um, one can clearly notice that he uh, would have had to put uh, like I, I'm sure hundreds of hours mastering those techniques. It's insanely difficult, and that really stuck to me. And uh, so I would say Balasundar sir was you know the highlight in my inspiration you know canvas. But yeah, and then I think um, for me a lot of the inspiration was actually. not just limited to veena it was quite wide i would say um i in fact um i have always been listening to a wide range of music with respect to instruments and vocals so uh, i can never say that you know one particular veena style inspired me so okay because when uh, you listen to for instance when you listen to lalgudi mama you wonder at the genius that um made things like uh, a monakalani tillana or a mishra severinjani tillana and and such beautiful compositions tillanas are just a few to name and when you listen to uh, you know let's say um, uh, uh, mali sir or mm-hmm. uh, uh, even uh, i mean so many other musicians i can go on so i mm-hmm. i feel the inspiration has not been limited to just veena so oh okay yeah. that i can i can it's pretty evident huh? because you are a veena player you are a singer You're a Mridangam artist. You're a Konakol artist. Oh, then recently you've become a Konakol artist. No, no you've become recently a rap artist. <laughs> rap artist. I mean, it's like this guy is like. Uh, uh, I mean, like what is what's what's your what's your uh, like stretch like limit the boundary, man? I'm telling you, is it is it wide or deep? I think it's both. You know, it's like uh, multi-dimensional because uh, every every. Uh, I mean, like, of course, I frequent and I'm a, I'm a hardcore fan of what you do on uh, social media as Thank well you. because that's the that's the everyday thing that I can meet you because I can't meet you every day, so I go to social media. And then there is something, and then oh, okay, okay, this guy is like. Uh, I also sometimes make this funny comments of saying like, okay, Manju exited the room and then he quit music. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on! Yeah. You don't I mean, know how, like how inspiring uh, you have been, also. So well. it's the if if there is anyone that comes to mind, if I start reciting anything in Konakol, it's you. So it's and uh, um, you know that even I was noticing the other day that when I said this, I was trying to unconsciously emulate uh, your mouth position. I didn't realize mm-hmm. that actually. So. uh i just realized that when you say kedadaka takita takita you tend to recite it slightly from the the rear end of the tongue if i'm not wrong uh which gives you that honestly i haven't taken a note of that <laughs> but that really okay, now you make me conscious now every time i do it i'm <laughs> <laughs> no but that okay. actually changed the 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 uh, uh, what do you say the impact of that the kedadaka takita takita i can't say it properly because uh especially here so uh i have to warm up especially when i'm with you so you know when you see someone who's like uh insane in something uh, you tend to defer no so that's what's happening now uh, <laughs> well uh, to be honest with you this kitataka i always whenever i am doing some master class or something uh when people have to say something really fast uh. i i ask them to concentrate uh, not on the tip of the tongue but on the back of the tongue the 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 ka kha ga if these are the things which is very clear if you can concentrate on that hmm. it's very easy to get the speed but people always concentrate on the tip of the tongue they yeah. think the speed is there but hmm. the, the, the the speed might be here yeah. but the the hindrance or the the speed breaker is here hmm. so if hmm. you control exactly. this it's it's very very easy to do uh, speed you know hmm. Mm. Uh, I'm not talking about any expression or anything, but mm. when it comes to total speed, you you have to concentrate, uh, be very aware of this part, mm. because you know, uh, uh, just to talk about uh, the the most of the South Indian languages, you know, mm. uh, it's very very uh, interesting the way they have developed it, because uh, you have all these uh, vowels to start mm. with, a, a, e, u, u, where mm. you don't have the 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 role of the tongue mm. coming mm. at all, mm. so there are these. and then starts the consonants where it starts from here ka kha ga ga na and then it moves up towards your uh, your tongue which tongue becomes like this like mm. cha you know cha mm. cha ja ja nya uh. okay and then you have your tongue rolling upwards ta ta da da na 
Yeah. And then your tongue is straight and then touching the teeth. Ta, yeah. tha, da, dha, na. Yeah. And then you don't have the tongue in one line, but you are closing your mouth. Pa, pa, yeah. ba, ba, ma. And yeah. then there are other consonants. Yara, lava, shesha, saha, laksh. Yeah. So the yeah. main problem with all the consonants to, to break the speed is uh, the ka, ka, ga, ga, nga. Mm. So mm. I, I, the, I, I can relate to it when, when you say that I use most of the rare end of yeah, my tongue yeah. or, you know, that one. So um, cool, cool observation because, uh, <laughs> I mean, like that's, that's already, that says a lot about you when, uh, when it comes to observation and emulating something. And then I'm sure the same thing has happened throughout uh, your life, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm super, super curious about, uh, have you ever performed vocal music full-fledged concert no i have i have not uh, uh, done a vocal concert so primarily the reason being uh, uh, i might be able to sing for about half an hour or something but uh, even uh, not with not with just um, um, not just with respect to musicality uh, i tend to observe that the flow that I get uh, while rendering an alapana, uh, let's say in raga, uh, with my veena, um, is uh, is vastly better than the flow that I get when I sing the same raga, and that is, I think, purely because of the time I've spent in both. So I spend most of my time playing veena, and uh, uh, first of all, I mean, I, I to get the stamina to sing for a you know two and a half hour concert. Uh, that would require a lot of that's specific work. There, yeah. mm, that's there. That. On top of that, I feel, you know, like these aspects, uh, there is just a, I feel, uh, I guess it's just because boils down to the time I've spent in Veena and vocal. It's just that the flow is much better in Veena. And when you, so when I start singing in a mic, I constantly expect myself to have the flow that I have in Veena. And when I don't get it, I get uh, irritated. So, so. Exactly. You, you yeah. just answered it. Because yeah. you know expectations that you have is pretty high, but I would say if you if you do a vocal concert, I'm yeah. sure it will sound absolutely as amazing as you do a Vina concert for yeah. many people like me. You know because you have your own expectations so high to match. Uh, I don't know if it if it matches your uh, Vina your vocal. You know, but how about how about Mridangam concerts? I used to uh, play Mridangam concerts uh, uh-huh. um, until a point and. Um, so, you know, some people said that you can't play Mridangam and Veena together. You know, one will one finger um, exertion will uh, affect the other. And I mean, they did have a point. And uh, but that was only if I really took Mridangam very seriously, like practicing for several long hours every day. And that's when it will start to impact Veena and probably be a bit detrimental. Because for Veena, you need very nimble fingers, very sensitive and soft fingers most of the time. And when you keep Pecking, especially for the gumki, I've noticed that whenever uh, uh, I play mridangam after playing veena, uh, I will not be able to play gumki properly because this, if the slightest touch in the middle or the index finger, would radiate pain till the elbow. Oh, so, okay. um, uh, but uh, the mridangam concert stopped. I guess for that reason, because if I had to do justice to mridangam, I wanted to practice more. But if I had to practice more, I have to take a back seat for veena. So, um, and uh, I think yeah. you should cut an album where you are the only artist where you're singing, uh, playing Veena and playing Mridangam for yourself, and then I actually rap- want to do rapping that. on top yeah. of that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool, man. I mean, like it should be like a a, a hybrid uh, album where yeah. it's not only contained uh, to Carnatic music. You know, you should yeah. have uh, like many elements to it where you can cater to a lot of, of course, like. There is nothing like you playing Carnatic music, but but it's just like out of curiosity. I yeah, think like probably. you should yeah. you should do a one person album where uh, uh, I I'm sure, man, you will. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to use this word. This is really uh, you will you will you will rock. <laughs> I will I will refrain from using something else. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is one thing. But. Uh, just, just I'm so curious about because it's a very it would be a mundane or a lame question 
uh, to put this uh, thing in front of you, like asking uh, how many hours do you practice? Yeah. You know, I, I really don't don't like that question because normally serious musicians uh, they don't count on how many hours they practice. Mm. This is what I think because uh, they are always in the zone. You know, mm. I mean, like uh, 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 just instrument does not mean that you practice for so many hours you know Absolutely. your mind yeah. is always uh, always doing something or like even like cleaning your instrument or mm. uh, this is one thing uh, that uh, uh, you know mysore brothers uh, mm. they 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 told me about what their father used to tell them like it's okay that you but you should be doing something with your music and instrument mm. all the time never get out of the zone and this when when they told me it like like caught me like that you know like okay i i'm not like literally practicing like for uh, for 8 hours or anything but i do have my my mm. time of like every morning uh, what you call as a uh, rudiments or mm. or the basic uh, where you don't improvise or anything you just have your normal uh, like doing your rit ritualistic stuff you know yeah, yeah, so yeah. i practice that kind of thing and then only after i have got my hands warmed up for a couple of hours or three hours uh, starts floating away to different kinds of uh, uh, like improvising or thinking of different ideas and all these things but honestly i'm never out of the the, the rhythm zone mm -hmm. i'm always there and uh, it's it's a constant bliss and then i always tell my family that i'm never ever bored in my life not even for one second because you leave me for one second, I think of something else, of something related to music. You know, it's 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 a it's 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 a blessing in disguise. At the same time, it's a curse. It's mm. it's like kind of like a paradox which we are living all the time because mm. we are disconnected with uh, with a lot of things, but mm. we are connected to something that's much more good. than uh, what it is there. You know, in the in the in the in the physical world. So.